Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yemane Kalata Tedla from Nagaoka University of Technology Natural Language Processing Lab. And today I'm going to present um, Tigrinya morphological segmentation with bidirectional long short term memory networks and its effect on English Tigrinya machine translation. This research is uh, supervised by Professor Kazid uh, Yamamoto. So here is the presentation outline. In the first part, I'm going to uh, give a brief introduction to the Tigrinya language, which is the focus of the research and our research objectives, and also the methods of tagging and segmentation that we have uh, adapted. And in the second part, we are I'm going to detail the research approach, experiments, results, and analysis of the three experiments uh, in this research. And then we are going to uh, uh, finalize with question and answer session. So let's start off with the introduction. So Tigrinya is spoken in uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia, uh, which are found on the eastern part of uh, Africa. And uh, it's spoken by, by uh, over 7 million people in both these countries and other communities uh, in the world. And Tigrinya is a member of the Semitic languages, which also uh, is composed of uh, the language Amharic, Arabic, Hebrew, and other languages. So these languages share common morphological patterns and also some uh, syntax. So I will give a brief introduction of uh, the Tigrinya language grammar. So the basic word order in Tigrinya is SOV. The verb comes at the end of the sentence, similar to uh, Japanese. And uh, in Tigrinya, uh, the subject verb agreement is uh, enforced by inflection of pronoun system and the verb system. So as we, ca we can see in English, uh, it's weakly inflected, but Tigrinya is highly inflected language. The writing system of Tigrinya is, no, is known as uh, Gez script or Ethiopic. It's one of the oldest uh, writing systems in Africa and we still use it for education and daily communication. And uh, it's an Abugida writing system, which uh, means, uh, for example, here, there's, this is one uh, syllab syllable and uh, it contains a, a consonant and a vowel. So the consonant and the vowel are embedded here. And the other, uh, Variants of this base alphabet are derived from this shape, so they look similar to the base alphabet. And this type of uh, uh, language, I uh, mean, uh, writing systems are known as Abugida writing system. So there are about 275 symbols in this writing system. And one of the drawbacks of uh, the Gez script is that it does not represent gemination, which is the doubling of consonants. So for example, here, these are two words. One is Madara and the other, the other one is Madara. But in the Tigrinya writing system, they are both written in the same way. Uh, but this can be um, uh, understood from the context, and it does not create that much of a problem for native speakers. So the Tigrinya morphology is known as root pattern or root template morphology. It's a non-concatenative uh, type of morphology, which means the affixes, prefix, infix, and others are not necessarily found in sequential orders. So here we have the prefix part. Uh, here is a part of a circumfix, and the other part is found on the suffix side, so these are not found in sequential order. Uh, and the, the unique uh, pattern or um, um, morphological rule in Tigrinya and other Semitic languages is the um, uh, root pattern template that we see here in the stem part. So the roots contain only the consonants and the infixes or the patterns contain uh, uh, vowel alternations. So due to these internal inflections, um, um, for example, here we see uh, some uh, uh, internal inflections inside the stem. And uh, according to these inflections, the tense aspect mood of this verb uh, is uh, changed. So this is one of the unique patterns uh, of the Tigrinya language. And we have two uh, 
ways of uh, doing the morphology. One is inflectional uh, category. Uh, so here there are four tense aspect mood categories, as we can see here. And for every category, there are different verb classes. And the, part, the pronoun system has 10 classes. And the other is derivational category, which has um, about eight uh, different possibilities. And if we combine uh, all these permutations, uh, the, the, the 32 possible stem templates of stem of a tense aspect mood and der derivational categories, along with agreements, polarity, relativization, uh, preposition, and conjunction clitics, then by uh, the combining all these possibilities, one can generate over 100,000 different word forms as researched by Michael Kessler. So uh, this can uh, uh, hint that the morphological complexity, especially of the verb uh, system uh, in Tigrinya is uh, quite complex. So that was a brief introduction of Tigrinya language, and next is our research objectives. So um, we uh, plan to initiate Tigrinya NLP research from the foundation by uh, developing a corpus. A corpus is um, a large um, text which is especially uh, created for linguistic studies. And uh, from this corpus, we uh, plan to um, research some fundamental or essential NLP systems. And by using these NLP systems, we will try to uh, enhance the uh, performance of English to Tigrinya machine translation system. So while during, during, during this, because uh, Tigrinya is a low resource language, we don't have uh, that much of corpus, corpus so far, and uh, the uh, uh, morphology of the language is quite complex, so we will uh, consider the following features, uh, including linguistic cues, language independent methods, and automatic feature extraction. So how is the research position? Um, this, these are um, the NLP phases, which uh, uh, are processed one after the other. So uh, we have the morphological analysis phase at the forefront of these stages. And uh, this is done or performed at the word level. And then we have sy syntactic analysis, which is done at the sentence level. So our uh, research is positioned here. Here we, we um, researched morphological segmentation, and here we uh, research part of speech tagging uh, for Tigrinya. And the output of these systems is used to enhance the uh, performance of an English to Tigrinya machine translation system. It can also be used for other uh, systems. So before going into the details of this uh, current research, uh, our, uh, I will try to brief uh, some of the uh, related works in Tigrinya NLP. So this is our uh, research that we have conducted in Nagaoka uh, University of uh, Technology during the master's thesis. And uh, we created a, a new part of speech tagged corpus. And uh, from this corpus, we developed a part of speech tagger uh, by using methods such as the real transformation tagger and the uh, HMM based TNT tagger. And the uh, maximum accuracy that we've uh, achieved during that time was about 82%. So we, we tried to improve the performance of uh, this tagger in this current research. So apart from the uh, uh, Nagaoka Tigrinya corpus that we've created, uh, we don't find uh, other publicly available um, uh, corpus for Tigrinya. A few of the available uh, text resources are some online dictionaries, um, some concordance in facilities, um, and uh, uh, some word lists. And uh, regarding NLP, we have a pioneering work uh, uh, to find out the morphological uh, morphology of uh, Tigrinya uh, verbs. Um, and there's, there was also a, a research that was conducted in Nagaoka University of Technology, Technology a stammer for Tigrinya search engine, uh, and some other uh, um, basic tools. So that's why we made it our um, research objective to uh, start Tigrinya NLP from the scratch by developing corpus uh, and also fundamental NLP tools. So the methods of tagging and segmentation that we have adapted in this research uh, are a classification approach, sequence labeling approach, and sequence to sequence uh, labeling approach. Uh, and we are going to see a brief introduction of these uh, approaches in the next slides. 
So the first one is a classification approach uh, employing support vector missions. In this approach, uh, the idea is to find a separating line or hyperplane for uh, different classes or data pointers, as we can see here. So uh, the task is to maximize the margin between the tips of these data pointers, which are called the support vectors. So this is a two-class problem, but in our case, for example, part of speech tagging is a multi-class problem. So we adapted um, uh, one versus the rest approach to find um, uh, classifiers for multi-class problems. So the second approach was sequence labeling uh, based on conditional random fields. And here, in the previous uh, approach, uh, the SVM that we have adapted was um, uh, it, uh, is, it does not consider contextual information, uh, but uh, in uh, part of speech tagging or morphological segmentation, uh, the context also uh, has to be considered in order to um, 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 uh, find uh, a good performance out of these systems. So conditional learning for this naturally will allow us to model level dependencies. Uh, for example, this is in, in the English case, determinants come usually before nouns. So this information is very useful for uh, to identify the correct levels. And here, the task is to find the most uh, likely level sequence given an input sequence X. And in doing so, the uh, entire sequence uh, transitions are uh, considered while uh, doing conditional random fields. The third uh, approach that we have followed is uh, neural networks based on long uh, short term memory. And uh, these are specially designed to capture long uh, term uh, dependencies in sequences. So as we can see here, uh, this, inputs, uh, this output is um, affected by these inputs. But there is a time lag here. So in order to model these long uh, distance relationships, we, uh, th these LSTMs are ideal uh, approaches. And uh, in Tigrinya also, um, as we have seen uh, previously, uh, to, in order to find out this uh, border uh, uh, between prefixes and uh, between all the affixes, uh, one has to consider uh, this, uh, the relationship in, in these morphemes. So here, uh, the circumfix begins at this prefix part, and it ends at this uh, um, suffix part. And uh, so there is a time lag or uh, delay here. So in order to model this uh, relationship, we uh, used uh, LSTM approach. So the, in, in addition to the uh, standard LSTMs, uh, in, in Tigrinya there are, for example, in part of speech tagging, uh, some of uh, the words can be correctly disambiguated by looking at the future information. And uh, in for doing that, we adapted by uh, di bidirectional LSTM networks. And here, uh, in addition to the regular forward pass, um, which captures the past or the left context, um, there is also a uh, reverse traversal, and this is uh, uh, this will capture the future or the right context uh, in a sentence. So we have applied bidirectional LSTM networks for this purpose. So that was a brief introduction of the approaches that we have adapted in our research. And uh, next, I will uh, go uh, into the details of the researches one by one. So we'll start off with uh, Tigrinya, part of speech tagging, with morphological patterns and word embedding. So uh, first, what is part of speech tagging? Uh, a part of speech tagging is a task of assigning lexical categories or word classes such as nouns, verbs, adjectives to words. And uh, words, uh, depending on the context, uh, might have uh, uh, several roles uh, of part of speech tag. So for example, this uh, statement, I can fish, uh, might be the act of fishing, or it, can, it could be uh, canning fish into a fish container. So in order to resolve uh, the correct meaning or the intended meaning of this uh, sentence, along with other contextual information, we can uh, use part of speech tagging information also. So here, if can is a modal, then we're talking about fishing. And if can is a verb, then we're talking about canning fish. So uh, this is the task of part of, this is how the task of part of speech tagging helps in resolving the the meaning of sentences. 
So this is um, an example of the recent work in part of speech tagging uh, from the research by Planck et al. Um, and uh, what we see here is uh, language groups and the approaches uh, follow uh, HMM based TNT tagger, wireless TM method, and CRF. So um, if we notice in this range, this is a low resource scenario because we have only about 1,000 sentences. And for this low resource scenario, um, if we see here, uh, the blue line represents TNT, and for uh, for these language groups, um, TNT was better in this low resource scenario. But when we come to Semitic uh, languages, in this case Arabic and Hebrew, from the beginning, uh, BioLSTM is performing better in this low uh, scenario. So uh, we uh, uh, it, it means that maybe uh, the other the methodologies that work better for other languages do not necessarily work uh, uh, for or Semitic language. So, um, uh, we followed two approaches. One is uh, uh, based on manual feature engineering, and uh, this feature engineering was done for classification based on SVMs and sequence labeling based on CRFs. And the second approach was uh, follows an unautomatic feature engineering or word embeddings. And this was uh, uh, f uh, done with sequence to sequence labeling uh, using LSTMs, uh, LSTM networks for uh, part of speech tagging. So uh, in the first approach, uh, we, we utilized morphological patterns based on uh, SVM and CRFs. Uh, so as I've said, Tigrinya is uh, morphologically complex. It has a rich morphology. So for example, this, this is one token, one word. And if you translate it into English, it becomes if you did not ask him. So this information, uh, we can find it separately for English. But in Tigrinya, it's embedded in this single word. So by using this uh, morphological information, we try to improve the performance of a part of speech tagger. So these are some of uh, the examples of the uh, morphological patterns extracted for uh, during the verbs. So this kind of patterns would be helpful to uh, identify uh, during the verbs. So we extracted this kind of information for uh, the other parts of speech also. So in the future design, we uh, designed uh, contextual features and lexical features. Uh, these contextual features are combined, uh, consist of uh, two previous words and two previous part of speech tags, and also two, uh, uh, future, two words from the future. For the lexical features, uh, after rigorous, rigorous training, uh, we uh, selected one to six characters in the suffix and one to five characters in the prefix. And the morphological patterns, which I have described earlier, uh, we, we uh, uh, extracted uh, for stems having uh, stem lengths of greater than or equal to six characters. Uh, and we are uh, we designed two uh, tag sets, two sets of tag sets. One contains uh, 73 tags originally, but uh, out of them we were only able to find about 67 tags in the data. And we, because the data was uh, rather small, we reduced the tag sets into 20 tags. So we experimented with both these tags. And uh, the data is the uh, part of speech tag data that we have created in our previous research, which contains about 72k tokens. So this uh, um, graph summarizes the research results uh, and compares sequence labeling or CRF approach uh, and classification uh, based SVM approach. And uh, if we see here in this uh, x-axis, we have the features and here we have the accuracy in percentage. So when uh, using only words without any context on morphological features, we see that the uh, SVM slightly uh, performs better compared to the CRF. However, when context is, uh, when context and morphological information is added, we see that uh, the uh, CRF slightly outperforms the, C the SVM method. And this is because uh, sequence, uh, CRF uh, takes into account the contextual information. So uh, in order to see the um, effect of uh, the morphological patterns concerning unknown words, uh, uh, 
uh, this graph can show us this the the, uh, the effect of uh, the morphological patterns uh, in in, in uh, boosting the performance of unknown words. Here we have only used the when we only using the contextual uh, information, the accuracy was about 40 percent. However, um, when more morphological patterns such as uh, the, the stem patterns and the suffixes prefixes are added as features, we see that the the um, uh, in performance improves, and when we use all the features, the uh, performance almost uh, doubled to about 80%. So we can uh, understand that morphological uh, uh, patterns uh, improve the accuracy of part of speech tagger. And our data is small, so in order to see the impact of uh, improving, uh, increasing the data size on the performance, uh, uh, we conducted a we we ha we um, show this learning curve uh, graph. So as the data size is increased, we see that the performance also improves. So we can expect that uh, if we have more data, then the performance will also increase. So uh, the um, result, the maximum result that we have got from the uh, from this approach is about 90.89 percent. The second approach is without considering manual feature design, and uh, we employed word embeddings with uh, sequence to sequence parallel stem networks. So word embeddings are a representation of words in the form of numeric vectors. Here is an, a hypothetical example. So these words are represented in such a manner, and uh, these uh, provide more expressive representation, and uh, we can also identify uh, many different types of relatedness of words based on the context. So here is an example uh, of verb tense relationship. Uh, walking is related to walk, and sw swimming is related to swim. So we try to um, extract morphological patterns by using uh, word embeddings without any uh, feature engineering. And uh, the uh, approach that we have followed is sequence to sequence uh, by LSTM uh, network. And uh, as we can see here, the input is a sequence of words in a sentence, and the output is also uh, another sequence uh, of labels. So here what happens is uh, the um, sequence is converted into word embeddings and uh, more uh, uh, meaningful representation of the morphemes is extracted by these LSTM networks. This is forward traversal and this is backward traversal, and uh, the output of these both LSTMs is uh, simply concatenated here, and at last we used a softmax classifier to find out the probability, uh, the level uh, of the labels. So for the experimental setup, we tried uh, with uh, two sets of vocabulary size. One uh, considers the most common V tokens, in our uh, case about 10,000, and uh, uh, we um, masked the rare words which introduce noise uh, into the system by using a token, and the other uh, is by, uh, by considering all the tokens. So the, net, the network that we have uh, used is both the standard LSTMs and by LSTM, and we ex conducted the experiments for both our data sets. So this uh, table summarizes the results. So as we can see here, the uh, maximum result was found uh, from the BioLSTM network, here also the BioLSTM network, and uh, these results are pretty much similar. So uh, we can understand that using um, only the, the, the most frequent uh, vocabulary by uh, ignoring the noise or the rare words, we achieved uh, quite uh, the same result. So uh, this, um, this by using only the um, most frequent frequent vocabularies, we can achieve high accuracy. So in summary, 
uh, we have investigated part of speech tag in Fortigrinia using classification, uh, sequence labeling, and sequence sequence approach, and achieved an accuracy of 91.6%, which is currently the state of the art in Tigrinya. So we have improved our previous results, as we can see from here, and uh, we show that morphological patterns improved, uh, especially the unknown word accuracy by about 40% absolute change. And these uh, the corpus and the CRF based tagger are released to the public. So the second uh, experiment was morphological segmentation with LSTM neural networks for uh, Tigrinya. And uh, the task of morphological segmentation is basically finding or detecting boundaries of morphemes. And uh, here, there is an example here. This uh, word can be translated as you did not ask. And uh, the, morpho the morphemes of the morpheme chunks that are found in this word are as uh, given here. So we want to find the boundary, the boundary uh, of uh, uh, these morphemes. So this is a, a prefix to stem boundary, and then we have a stem to suffix boundaries. Uh, so this is the task of morphological segmentation. In the related work for uh, morphological segmentation, we mainly see um, unsupervised, supervised, and semi-supervised approach. In this case, in, in, in unsupervised approach, we, 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 they use a large unlabeled data and, and try to learn morphological boundaries. In supervised uh, uh, approach, uh, they use labeled uh, data, boundary labeled data, and in semi-supervised approach, uh, small labeled and large un unlabeled data is used. So so we are going to see the uh, recent works uh, based on uh, this work uh, for uh, English, which is weakly inflected, and other three uh, highly inflected languages. So this is um, the graph that shows uh, the, the uh, comparison of the three methodologies. Uh, in this case, the unsupervised approach. Uh, here we have a supervised approach by using only 1,000 uh, labeled tokens. And here we have uh, a semi-supervised approach by using unlabeled and small labeled data. And as we can see from here, we uh, they are they achieved um, the higher performance by uh, using semi-supervised approach. Um, but uh, if we see the uh, state of the art works in segmentation, most of them are uh, based on supervised approaches. So in our case, we followed um, a supervised approach because the purpose of, our, of this research is mainly to build uh, a, a small or medium-sized morphologically segmented corpus and uh, if, to achieve good perform segmentation performance so that we can use the system to <coughs> improve or enhance the performance of emission translation system from English to Tigrinya. So for that purpose, we created a new manually segmented corpus containing about 40, uh, more than 45,000 tokens. And uh, our research will investigate uh, which features are better, character subword features or character embeddings for Tigrinya segmentation, and how the data size affects performance. And also because our uh, data is uh, rather low for low resource scenario, we need to tune the hyperparameters. And we'll, we also investigate what tagging, uh, which tagging scheme is uh, better for uh, Tigrinya segmentation. So regarding the tagging schemes, uh, we adapted BIO tagging scheme, which is a general chunk tagging scheme. A chunk may be a character chunk or word chunk or phrase chunks. And there are various variants of this BIO tagging. So um, some are less expressive and some are uh, more ex ex expressive. Uh, so as we can see from this uh, example, the word readers is uh, uh, segmented in, those, in these chunks. And by using this BIE, which means begin int, uh, inside int uh, uh, annotation, this is how uh, it would be annotated. So uh, in our case, we um, experimented with these four variants of the BIO tagging scheme. And 
And for, um, for the features, we adapted language independent features uh, of characters, substrings, and uh, character bigrams. Bigrams are a set of uh, two consecutive uh, characters in a string. And the uh, range of the characters that we select is, is a window five, which spans five left and five right characters. We selected this uh, window five because uh, in our LSTM experiments, uh, the results uh, with a fixed size uh, window experiments did not improve after window size 5. So for fair comparison of the CRF and the LSTM methods, we uh, um, selected a window size of 5. So the baseline system in this experiment uses only the character features. And by using the BIE tagging scheme, the F1 score achieved was around 75.7%. And uh, all the other methods that we have applied uh, perform, uh, outperform this uh, baseline score. So the data is uh, the data, the character windows that were generated from our data uh, looks like this. The 90% of the data was used for training, and the other 10% used uh, for validation and test. And all the experiments in this research uh, are done with tenfold cross validation in order to um, uh, uh, prevent overfitting. So this uh, graph summarizes the results of the different tagging schemes, BIE, BIES, uh, BIO, and BIOES. Um, for CRF, LSTM, and BIOLSTM approach, and as we can see here, um, the b better scores or best scores were uh, achieved by using BIOLSTM uh, approach and BIE taggings, 94.67%. Uh, so in this case, in for CRFs, the score was about 92.62, and for um, LSTM, 94.37, and for BIOLSTM, 94.67. So we see that uh, BIOLSTMs are better when compared to LSTMs and CRFs. And uh, if we notice here, the uh, results regarding BIO and BIOES are uh, lower compared to the other uh, schemes. And this is because of this introduction of the uh, outside tag. Uh, instead of uh, adding more information, more useful information, uh, the O tag uh, became a noise. And that's why we see uh, this uh, the score of BIO lower than the score of the other tagging schemes. So here we uh, see in detail the ear analysis using BIE and BIO schemes. So these are the confusion matrix of these two uh, schemes. And uh, there are two types of errors here, under-segmentation error and over-segmentation error. These uh, diagonal uh, values are the values that are, that are correct predictions. So um, in this case, uh, for the under-segmentation, we expected a boundary but uh, we found otherwise. And for over-segmentation, uh, instead of uh, finding, um, uh, the expectation was finding uh, inside tags, but they, we found seg segmented or boundary tags instead of uh, these uh, uh, inside uh, annotations. So uh, when, compared, when we compare BIE and BIO, we see that there were more, more, there were more errors in BIO in both the uh, under segmentation and over segmentation um, errors, and uh, generally the under segmentation error is uh, more when compared to the over segmentation error. So this uh, hints that there is more room for uh, improving uh, under segment uh, the the uh, models because under segmentation error is more. That means we have more uh, room to improve. Uh, segmentation. 
so uh, if we see how data size affects the performance well, while when using small uh, data 10% of the data we see a large variance in this whisker uh, box and whisker plot the, uh, the the score varies largely here and when we use all of the data there is a little bit of there is a little uh, variance and we see that the performance is higher so that means by by adding more data we can uh, achieve more stable and uh, uh, better systems and for uh, the future engineering we use embeddings and when only character uh, embeddings are used the uh, f1 score was 94.67 however when we add word embeddings uh, the results slightly improved uh, so this is currently the state of the art in Tigrinya morphological segmentation so in summary, we built the first morphologically segmented corpus for Tigrinya, and we investigated different tagging schemes and found out that BIE schemes uh, are suitable for Tigrinya. And we also experimented uh, with fixed size window LSTM and by LSTM with character and word embeddings for extracting morphological features. And the maximum score that we've achieved is 97, 95.07%. So the last experiment is about morphological segmentation for English to Tigrinya statistical machine translation. So we used the morphological uh, segmentation that we have uh, um, we have uh, researched in the previous uh, research to improve the performance of an English to uh, Tigrinya machine translation. So generally, English to Tigrinya machine translation is quite challenging because of the morphological diver divergence and the syntactic divergence uh, of these two, two languages. So English is weakly inflected, and Tigrinya is a highly inflected language, and that means the token count is uh, uh, there is a large difference of token count between English and Tigrinya. As we can see here, this is the uh, token count uh, uh, of Tigrinya in our parallel corpus that we have used for this research, and this is the token count of the English tokens. So we see uh, a 38 38% uh, uh, imp in increase, or the token count of English is larger by 38% compared to the Tigrinya. So there is a large uh, difference in the token count. And uh, because Tigrinya is morphologically uh, complex language, the uh, new word forms that are formed in Tigrinya uh, are large. And due to that, due to that we have um, a large size of vocabulary for Tigrinya. And in the syntactic divergence, uh, the word order of these two languages is uh, different. English is SVO and Tigrinya is SOV. So because of that, during training, we have several problems, such as out of vocabulary, poor word alignment, and complex language model. And on top of that, the parallel corpus that we have used in this research is uh, quite limited in size and in domain. So. Uh, because of these factors, the uh, Tigrinya, English to Tigrinya machine translation is uh, challenging. So this is an example of how difficult the word alignment could be. This is one word in Tigrinya, and it can be translated in the f in, in using these words. So it's difficult to find a single alignment or correspondence for this word in English. So in order to mitigate this problem, uh, one way is to segment the Tigrinya word into its uh, individual morphemes. So here is a coarse graded segmentation or stemming. We have the prefix, the stem, and the suffix here. And in defined grained segmentation, we can further um, class, um, divide uh, this morpheme into its uh, 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 submorphs uh, as such. And also this suffix is uh, segmented in the following manner. So we see that the alignment is a little bit improved here when compared to the previous uh, slide. So we want to find out whether this uh, kind of segmentation uh, affects positively or improves the performance of an English to Tigrinya translation system. 
So after segmentation, this is how the token count looks like. So this is the English side of the corpus, and this is the uh, original uh, corpus of the Tigrinya uh, side. And after uh, segmentation or stemming, uh, this is how the token count improved, and this is how the token count improved after uh, fine-graded morphological segmentation. And we can see that here almost the uh, English token count and the Tigrinya token count here uh, is uh, almost the same. So by using uh, segmentation, the token count difference was uh, reduced. So we compiled two versions of the parallel corpus. The parallel corpus that we've used is uh, the Christian Bible parallel corpus, which is the only um, publicly available um, English Tigrinya uh, parallel corpus. And it's verse-based corpus, and a verse might contain more than one sentence. So we created or compiled two uh, versions of this corpus. One is the verse aligned, and the other one is the sentence aligned. Uh, but uh, uh, the corpus that we have used had some issues. So in the Tigrinya side, some verses are found combined together. However, in the English side, all the verses are found separate. So in order to strictly align these uh, kind of verses, we also combined the English side of the verses uh, by considering the Tirnia side of the verses. So all in all, about 31,000 cent uh, ver verses, and the average verse length was 32 words. And similarly, for the sentence aligned corpus, corpus uh, verses with only one sentence are kept. So there are some sentences, some verses, which contain more than one sentence, and we filtered out these sentences, and uh, the uh, sentence uh, length, I mean, the sentence count was reduced by uh, around 34%. So for the sentence verse uh, parallel corpus, we have around 20,000 uh, um, sentences. So we uh, made experiments, we performed experiments by using these two corporate, corpora, and uh, this is the architecture of the phrase-based machine translation system that we have adapted. And here we have the English source uh, corpus, and here we have the Tigrinya uh, cor uh, corresponding uh, 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 corpus. And uh, we, using this uh, uh, setup, we um, uh, researched three models. One is the baseline, which is only the unsegmented Tigrinya version. Um, the other one is by segment by stemming or the, the, the Tigrinya side and also morphologically segmenting the Tigrinya side. So we have a lined corpus of English and Tigrinya. And from this corpus, a um, phrase table or trans flash translation model is created. And from the monolingual uh, target side from the Tigrinya corpus, uh, uh, we uh, create a language model which improves the fluency of the system. And the Moses uh, decoder uh, is used to uh, find out the best translation candidate, uh, the target uh, sentence. And by using this target or the output translation and a reference sentence, we evaluate the system. So this is a result for the verse-based models. Um, so the, syst the first system is for the baseline, and these um, uh, outputs or these systems are just uh, the same as the baseline. Uh, we, uh, we, we, in order to, in order to fairly compare this uh, baseline with the segmented models, we also segmented the output of this baseline system. We stemmed it and we segmented it, and we uh, compared the re the result of this systems. So as we can see here, there is a slight improvement, 19.8, uh, 20.9 here. So we can see that um, uh, segmentation does uh, improve uh, the uh, uh, quality of translation from English to Tigrinya. And this is because, as we can see from this graph, uh, this is the out of vocabulary ratio for uh, the baseline system and the segmented models. So we can see that the out of vocabulary ratio was greatly reduced here. And similarly here, the perplexity, which is a measure of the complexity of the language model, is also uh, greatly reduced, as we can see from here. So this uh, reduction has uh, also transferred into the uh, uh, improving the quality of the uh, translation. 
So we, we see also the same trend for the sentence-based models. Uh, so we, we, we can conclude that um, uh, the segmentation has uh, has improved the ali word alignment, has improved uh, the quality of translation uh, in English to tra Tigrinya machine translation. So in summary, an English to Tigrinya parallel corpus was compiled and properly aligned on verse level and sentence level. And the effect of stem-based or morpheme and morpheme-based segmentation on tr machine translation quality, uh, quality was uh, investigated. And <coughs> we, uh, so we, so we show that uh, the segmented model is scored slightly better than the unsegmented baseline. So overall, the main contributions of this research uh, are summarized as follows. In corpus construction, we built a 50 million uh, word uh, text corpus, and we used this uh, corpus to analyze word embedding models in Tigrinya. And we uh, compiled an English to Tigrinya parallel corpus properly. We constructed the first morphologically segmented corpus. And by using this corpora, we developed some NLP systems. In the first morphological segmentation research, Search for Tigrinya with uh, bidirectional LSTM networks. Uh, we find that the optimal tagging scheme was BIE uh, scheme and achieved 95.07%, uh, which is the state of the art for morphological segmentation in Tigrinya without any feature engineering. Uh, second, uh, we researched the effect of stem-based and morpheme-based segmentation uh, to English Tigrinya machine translation and found out that segmentation can improve translation quality. And finally, we achieved 95.91.5% uh, accuracy, uh, which is the state of the art in Tigrinya part of speech tagging by employing LSTMs with word embeddings for part of speech tagging in Tigrinya. So in the future, we plan to enlarge the morphologically segmented uh, corpus and uh, research full-fledged morphological analysis for Tigrinya. We also plan to enlarge the parallel corpus uh, and investigate English to Tigrinya uh, translation using neural machine translation because uh, neural in, in neural machine translation we need a fairly large amount of data. So uh, once this uh, par large parallel corpus is available, we want to explore uh, Tigrinya English Tigrinya machine uh, translation using neural approaches. And finally. We also have a plan to improve the quality of Nagaoka Tigrinya corpus uh, by adding more dom domains and enlarging the data, and then explore segment level part of speech tagging, which is another method of uh, part of speech tagging for Semitic languages. So uh, these are the uh, journal publications and the conference papers, and thank you very much for your attention.